Matthew chapter 11. <clears throat> and it came to pass, when Jesus made an end of commanding his twelve disciples, sends them out. That was chapter 10. He departed thence to teach and preach in their cities. So, Jesus and the twelve are going out. They're all over the place. No Gentile cities. No Samaritans. Purely Jewish. Now, being all over Israel, now John had heard in prison. John the Baptist is in prison. <clears throat> the works of Christ. So, he's getting earful. He's hearing all kinds of things. He sent two of his disciples. John has disciples himself. And he calls for two. And he said to him, <coughs> Art thou he, Jesus, the Messiah, that should come? Or do we look for another? All right? If I'm the, the one called for as the voice, the preparer of the way of the Messiah. Now remember, up to the time that, that the baptism of Jesus, John never saw Jesus. Since the baptism of Jesus, John has never seen Jesus. So up pops this man, there's healing, there's disciples, there's all kinds of things going on. And John calls the question, are you the Messiah? Are you the Lamb of God? And if the kingdoms come, what on earth am I doing in prison? We'll see, I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. Jesus answered, said unto them, the disciples of John, Go and show John. You notice how... In Matthew, it doesn't really make a big deal about John the Baptist. And we get our name, you know, we're, we're, we're Baptists. Really? Have you looked at the name of Baptist in the Bible? The name of Baptist is before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The baptism of the first Baptist, the first Baptist was a man that had leprosy, did not believe in Christ. The first Baptist to show up in the Bible, he's before the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection, and salvation for a nation of Israel. Not a bunch of Gentiles. They weren't called Baptists in Antioch. Think about that. Chew on that piece of Baptist fried chicken for a little while. And you do what my grandpa used to do with, with fried chicken. My grandpa always said he grew up in the, in the Depression and all that. He was in the Navy, World War II. Man, he cleaned that chicken bone till it was clean. You could take two of my grandpa's chicken bones, run them together, and start a fire. I'm a born-again, Bible-believing Christian under the blood of Jesus Christ, old-time Methodist, Christian and then maybe I'll throw Baptist in there. The way the Baptist churches are today, I'm getting ready to get rid of that name. You allow the Catholic Church to call themselves Christian, and they're far from anything. But like, imagine the Catholic Church calling themselves Christian. They murdered Christian. But what Baptist knows the history of the church? I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine a Baptist? Here I go, five cents. Saying, Mary, Christ, Mass. So I came up with a term when I was in, in, a, in a perverted church. A Catholic Baptist or Baptist Catholic, whichever however you want to do it. And you got people, we're diehard Baptists. Yeah, you don't even know what the name means. 
And actually, before we were even Baptists, we were called separatists. But you know where you know where the distinguished comes in America when you know when we started to get freedom and we didn't want to be tortured, we didn't want to be killed, we didn't lose, we didn't want to lose our, our our property. We wanted the government to love us. We wanted the world to love us, and we forgot in the rights of the Constitution, in the rights of America. God bless America. We wanted the world to love us, and we forgot that. Jesus said, marvel not, the world hate you. They've got rights. you got the right to drop dead. That's what your right is. You can take a Bible and throw it in a garbage can, but you don't do that with, 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 a, with, a, with a, the American flag. Don't you dare let the American flag touch the ground. And I've seen people take their Bibles and skim it across the ground. I've seen Bibles fly off the top of the hoods of cars, the back trunks of cars, and the roof of cars. Alright. Go show John. Again, those things which you do hear and see. So the disciples of John have been watching Jesus. The twelve have been sent out. <coughs> the blind received their sight. Does the Baptist Church do that? The lame walk. The lepers are cleansed. Not only are they healed, they're cleansed. How are they cleansed? The, the leprosy disease is gone. What did Jesus tell the leper? Go tell the priest and do what Moses prescribed. The cleansing of a leper was for them to bring the offering, according to Luke Leviticus 13. Try that in the Baptist church. The deaf hear. The dead are raised up. The only time the dead are raised up in the Baptist church is when, when, when you get the closing hymn. All right, we're going to close. Oh, hallelujah. See you at the, at the restaurant. Oh, don't worry about tonight. We don't have messages tonight. COVID. I thought COVID was all gone. The poor had the the poor had the gospel preached to them. You mean that the poor didn't get food? You didn't get the poor a fellowship? Gospel. Let me ask you a question. Who is speaking to the to the disciples of John? Jesus. Is Jesus dead? No. Was Jesus buried? No. Has Jesus resurrected from the from the grave? No. What gospel is that? You know, I got a Baptist guy. Got to, you know, there's only one gospel in the Bible. <laughs> you don't need your Bible. What's the gospel being preached? To? The gospel of the kingdom. John just said, hey, listen, you know, to come in the kingdom, I was baptized in the nation of Israel, and then they're repenting of their sins. Behold the Lamb of God, and I'm sitting in jail. Knows how Jesus said the gospel would be the poor. He mentioned, when you go back to John, to, oh yeah, the kingdom. All they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. John went up to the, to the king and said, Hey, listen, that's adultery, that woman you're marrying. And we read later on, it wasn't the king that had him put in jail, it was the wife. And blessed, happy is he, whoso shall not be offended in me. Calm down, John. Now, John's not getting offended. He is doubting. Offense would be Jesus got all the crowds. Now, later on, the disciples of John will have an offense. Well, I said, you know that guy you said, that, you know, the Lamb of God, you know that stuff is going on, and, and you baptize him. Well, he and his disciple over there, they're baptizing more than we are, and all that. And John's like, calm down. Relax. Remember I told you, he shall increase, I shall decrease.
when as they departed, Jesus has been speaking. Jesus began to say unto the multitudes concerning John, about the Baptist. There's some idiots out there who think that John, his John's full name was John the Baptist. John, middle name, the Baptist, last name. I even heard, you know, John was the first Baptist. No, actually, Naaman was. Huh? Who's Naaman? Uh huh. Don't read your Bible. And the first Baptist baptized himself. So, yeah, you know, we say baptized once, immersed in the water. Immersion of the baptism of Naaman was he went in the water, underwater, seven times. You do that. And that was a picture Israel's cleaning of Elijah, or Elijah, I forget which one, I always forget the two. During the cleansing of the type of the, I mean, the, the leprosy is a type of, of a disease in the tribulation period. Leprosy is a type of sin. You can't get rid of it. It's the, some kind, it has, it's associated with the mark. What went you out in the wilderness to see? That's where John was. A reed shaking, a leaf. Did you, did you look for this weak guy? That wherever the wind blows, he will. Well, if the church likes fancy doodads and clowns, and, 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 and we'll get that. If the church likes fellowship and chicken and, and, and potato pasta and all that, we'll get that. If the church doesn't want to be in church Sunday night and midweek service, we'll do that. If the church wants to go to movie and bowling night, we'll do that. If the church wants to see how many goldfish the pastor can swallow, we'll do that. If the church wants to see the, uh, the, the, the youth director put peanut butter on his face and everybody in the youth group come in and lick the peanut butter off his face, it happens. In California, you want to go to church to see a woman get half in dress and naked and on, it happens. You want pure entertainment of, of a church given to, to children in the name of a, of a Bible? <laughs> BBS. You want a fancy, fancy, fancy paint shirt preacher? They're out there. You know, when I grew up as a child, as a, if a man wore a paint shirt, he was queer. I said that. Yes, I did. I'm amazed how many men I see today wear pink shirts. I still hold to that. You don't like it? You offended? Well, Jesus, what did Jesus say about offense? But what did, what did you went out to say? A man clothed in soft raiment, pink shirt, fluffy telly, bunny slippers, a shawl, wearing women's clothes like they do today, where they have drag queens teaching the kids in the schools. He went out to, to see men as they run around in, in a gay pride. That's happened. That's happened in Israel today. That's you know, if Sodom and Gomorrah, Sodom, you realize Sodom is not just America; it's worldwide. It's far worse. In Sodom and Gomorrah, I believe there was five, maybe at most seven cities. I think there was. It was Sodom and Gomorrah, and there were five neighboring cities. I believe it was. Sodomy, abomination, is worldwide. The only nation that seems to put a law against it, as far as I know, Russia. I would assume North Korea. But I don't know much about North Korea. I'm not sure about China or Japan. Behold, they that wear soft clothing are in king's houses. So what Jesus is not talking about a fruity duty. He's actually literally talking soft, expensive, fine, linen, comfortable clothes. 
That's royalty. Maybe you would probably maybe assume that Pharisees and the scribes and the togas maybe. Because you get Jesus, he gets in there and he pokes at the people. Okay? But what went ye out to see? A prophet. And all these people came out to John. And we read, and we'll see in the Gospels, the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees started, and he's like, what are you doing here? And at one point we read in some of the Gospels that they were sent by the people in Jerusalem. Will you go find out what that guy's doing? Will you find out where all these people are going? Why? Some people are going out to the, for the, 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 he's a prophet. Some people are going out, maybe he's the Messiah. And he'll flat light, outright deny, I am not him. I am not the light. I am the voice. Yea, I say unto you, more than a prophet. All right, you looking for a prophet? John is better, more than a prophet. So the church says today, we have no prophets. John the Baptist. Well, if we don't have prophets today, how on earth do we tell people they're going to go to hell or go to heaven when they die? How on earth are you going to say, we don't have prophets and all that? And if somebody come up to me and they're smoking cigarettes and I'm having a serious conversation with them, and I'm like, you know, sir, man, if you don't give those things up, you're going to get cancer and you're going to die. That's going to cause, uh, cause you to die smoking like that. What do you mean we don't have prophets? Man, sir, if, you, if you're going to walk out of that bar in that condition, you're going to cause an accident if you drive home. It may happen, it may, it may be a false prophet, or you may be a prophet. You see, Baptists, they talk too quick. They think they got. They think if they can put it on a sign and hang it on their house, who love joy, peace, <laughs> and the woman screams at her husband all day long, and he don't love her no more, and there's no joy unless he leaves the house and peace. It's it's hidden in the gun closet. That was an amen. For this is he, John, which is of whom is written. So Jesus tells us John is, has been written in the script. Not only is he a prophet, but the prophecies and the prophets spoke of him. Behold, I send my messenger, Isaiah, before thy face, Israel. That's not, that's not the church. That's not Gentiles. Nothing of John's message is, is to us or Gentiles. Gentiles and the church are not looking for a Messiah or King. Which shall prepare the way before thee, that be God, Jesus. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women... Men don't get pregnant. Jesus said that. There has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Now wait a minute. Hold your thought on that one. Stop there. Put the brakes on. I know that's a colon. But we're going we're, we're gonna to drop one of the periods on the floor for a moment and have a period there. Jesus has said of all the males that have been born of a woman. And we have two issues here. There has not been greater of a child born of a woman than John the Baptist. Number one, what about Jesus?
Jesus was born of a woman. But Jesus is not only man, he's God. Not only is he God, he's man, despite what the Jehovah Witnesses say. John is mere mortal. And of all the mortals spoken, born, that has died, that is living, that is going to be born. Your preacher is not the great. We got a great preacher. Oh, no, no, no. John is. And John was a preacher. And John was a Baptist. So you say. So when you elevate your preacher, he's the greatest. Did John preach? Yeah. Then you just elevated your preacher above John. You just violated the scriptures, Matthew 11, 11. And this won't be the first time that Jesus says this. All right, number two. We took the comma, we dropped it for a period for a moment. Did not J J John, is not the reason John's a sub, could he just sent two of his disciples say, are you the one? Did not John just have doubt? Doubting Thomas? He's not John like, you know, I'm in prison here. I, this is not the way things ought to be. If this is the kingdom and you're the Messiah, why am I in jail? So even you can be the great, you can be wonderful in the in the eyes of God and still say, God, what on earth are you doing? Why am I in this position? You don't believe me? Look at Job and look at his condition. You don't believe me? Look at Paul. If you don't believe me, can you imagine Noah sitting, uh, I think it's a year, uh, I, I, did, I did Genesis, it's in my notes, over a year he spent in that ark. You, you, you can't tell me that not once that Noah, the just man, I don't know about his wife and his son, but Noah, the just, you, you can't tell me he's not sitting there saying, when are you going to let me out of here? When is this going to stop? You, you can't tell me unrecorded that Joseph didn't say, uh, you know, I've done right. And the only thing I keep getting for be, doing right is I keep on ending up in jail and losing my coat. You know, the expression, he lost his shirt. Joseph lost his coat twice. So you can have doubts. You can have concernment. It's part of your life. Just don't stay in those doubts. Don't stay in those, those times of, is it really going to happen? As soon as you get in those doubts, get back to your faith right away. Get back in the Bible. Notwithstanding, go back to the corner. He, John, is the least of the kingdom of heaven, is greater than he. What would what, you just say, Jesus? What Jesus just said is the fact is Israel has rejected the Messiah. Jesus is on his way to Calvary. And what are you going to say? Oh, who, who killed Jesus? Was it the Romans? Was it the Jews? Or was it Jesus? The, the, the scriptures completely tell us. In the Gospels, it tells us in Acts, the Jews. There is no debate. And the very fact is that the Jews are there to say crucify him, and watching him be crucified is a fact to say, hey, we don't believe who you say you are. And the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees at the cross, well, come on, if you're, if you're God, come on down. He can save others, but he can't save himself. Come on, let's watch. He calls Elias. Let's watch Elias come in. They're mocking him. So guess what? God says, as far as the nation of Israel as corporate. All right, come here. Let me put you up on the shelf over here. 
as we go through the book of Acts, a transition, God's like, all right, here you, you're on the bottom shelf. Well, kill Stephen, move you up one more shelf. Paul has a heart and a desire. You're not listening to him. Put him up on another shelf. You stoned him. Put you up on another shelf. Now, that doesn't mean a Jew can't be saved. Individual Jews. But now God says, all right, I'll really kick you. I'll kick you, Israel. I'll kick you, Jews, right in the butt. I'll make you fall down. I will call the Gentiles. Peter, go to Cornelius. Oh, no, Lord, not me. I'm touching anything. Get over there. And Peter's not even finished with his message. And the Holy Spirit comes on these pork eating. What is that kitchen smell? That tastes good. How much does it taste good, Peter? He's over having Gentile food, so the Jews show back up. Philip, go down to, and here's a guy in a chariot, and he's reading Old Testament scriptures that the Baptists don't read. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, what you reading? I'm reading about this thing here, and Isaiah wrote about this. Is he talking about himself, or he's talking about someone else? And then he gets up there, and he showed him Jesus. That man was an Ethiopian. Check the titles of Paul's books. They are written to Gentile cities and towns. The only reason why we are in is to put a stumbling block, the Bible says, before the Jew. You won't believe me? I'll call those dug, ugly, stupid. You know, that, that there was a woman, her, her, her daughter, I think it was, was home sick with a devil. Oh, son of David, have mercy on me. Son of David, have mercy. And he ignored her. Finally, he addressed her and said, listen, I can't take the, the bread off the children's table and give it to the dogs. You know what he just called her? You know what a female dog is called? That woman was a Gentile. He called her a dog. Well, right now, you know what today? The dogs get in. And these Jews today that do not get saved, do not trust Jesus as their Messiah, they're going to have thousands, if not tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, if not millions, maybe trillions, I don't know how many, but they're going to have a vast number of Gentiles during the church age step up and say, oh, I believe he was the Messiah. And I read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Malachi, and all that. I read Malachi besides the fact that I'm supposed to tie to my church. I read the, 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 the minor prophets, and I saw Jesus. Hey, I marked my Bible, and look at the places I marked on red underline. That's Jesus. How come you didn't see him? And the fact is, in verse 11, is the fact is, Israel is rejecting the Messiah, At one point, we're going to see that, that the disciples are going to say, I thought, wait, Jesus, stop. Yes, I thought you said, I thought scriptures say Elias is going to come, Elijah. He did. Where is he? He was beheaded. In jail. John. Had Israel received John, received Jesus as the Messiah, John would have been Elijah. Look at the two men. They, they were practically the same. John and Elijah. Israel is rejecting the Messiah. John loses his head. And Israel starts taking a downhill. Now that doesn't mean God's completely finished with the Jews. The kingdom's been put off. We don't know how long the church age is going to be. And then you got seven years of tribulation, three and a half, which is going to be great tribulation. And that's God taking Israel, putting him over his knee. And, pah, 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 I don't care about your crying. <laughs> and then when Jesus comes, he's going to wrap his arms around him. He's going to love him and say, listen, I had to do that. You weren't listening. Now come into your nation. Come into your land. Come. 
And from those days, now look at this, Matthew. And from the days of John the Baptist, all right, I would assume the ministry. I, w I don't know it would be the birth of John. I would assume the ministry when John started preaching. The kingdom is coming. The kingdom is here. There is the Lamb of God. Unto now, at the moment Jesus is speaking, he has just sent the disciples of John back to John. He says, right now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence. Jezebel threatened Elijah. Isaiah, they say, was cut into two. The prophets were, 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 were killed. Abel was murdered by Cain. There were prophets of the Bible. They were slain. They were stoned. They were banished. You go now read to Matthew, I'm, excuse me, Hebrews 11. Go from Matthew 11 to Hebrews 11. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews is not a Gentile book. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. All those in the great faith chapters, Hebrews 11, are Jewish. And they suffered. Suffered violence. In the days before Noah, there was violence in the land. In the days after Noah, the violence take it by force. There have been wars. There will be war. This is Russia attacking Ukraine. <coughs> And I support missionaries in Ukraine. I pray for Ukraine. I pray for Russia. There are war. There's always been wars. There's been a war since Cain picked up whatever he picked up, even if it was just his fist, and killed his brother in a world war that lost a quarter of the population. When Cain killed Abel, it was four people in the world. One of them was dead. One of them was the murderer. One quarter of the population of the world was killed. That was violence. Can you imagine the world that the work is? They say the Bible says Eve knew. Imagine the moment when the word came to Eve and Adam and saying, "Your son is dead," and your son killed your son. Congratulations, you know the fruits of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now watch. For all the prophets, minor and major, the Jews put them in. And the law, Moses, prophesied unto John. The prophecies of Moses and the prophets. The Old Testament finishes at John. And at John, a man steps up and is baptized in water. And the man, the human, comes out of the water. The Holy Spirit comes down like a dove, not a dove. And the Father from heaven says, this is my Son in whom I'm well pleased. And he begins his ministry about 30 years old unto what we are right now. Now, what dispensation are we in? Do you realize in the dispensation that we are in right now, as far as what the Bible records, no anybody that dies right now, they don't stay dead in Israel. The disciples are out there. It's dead. Raises them from the dead. Jesus comes along. Raises them from the dead. Now, now we're not talking about Gentiles in Mexico and in Inca and in the North America and all that. We're not talking about uh, Africans. We're not talking about the Orient. We're talking about Israel. No one in Israel, the Jews, stay dead when they died when Jesus is around.
And yet Jesus tells them to go in certain times, go and perform what the law and the Moses says. And yet there is one man who goes to Jerusalem three times a year. As the law prescribes, and let me ask you a question. This man that does what the law says, do you think he needed to bring a sin offering? Why? He never sinned. You don't read about in detail. Now I know John tells us there are things that have happened that are not recorded, but you don't read about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John going to the temple and offering their sacrifices. The only time you read about the temple is Jesus primarily is in the treasury. Oh, your Baptist preacher would love that. And if he will receive it, This is Elias, which was for to come. If you were to receive what the prophets and the law said, and right in front of them right now doing the speaking is the Messiah. If you had believed the law and the prophets, that man in jail would be Elias, Elijah. The very fact is he's in jail, And, you, and the Pharisees are meeting together to, to kill him, Jesus. All right? You don't, get, you don't get Elias. Now, Moses and Elias, the prophets in the law of 13, are going to show up in the tribulation period before Jesus comes. Satan incarnate, the Antichrist, kills him. So we got a particular expression, die once, live twice, die twice, talk about the second death in, in Revelation 20, die twice, live once. What do you do with Moses? He died twice. He's going to die twice. He's going to go in hell? Oh, that sounds good. You know, if you die once, you'll, you, you'll, you'll die twice. and That sounds good, but what do you do with Moses? You die once, you know, if you're born once, you, you'll die twice. And if you're born twice, you die once. All right, what do you do with Jesus? Jesus need to be born in? You tell me Jesus is going to hell? Are you telling me because Moses and Jesus were not born again? They were not born twice. Oh, it sounds good, doesn't it? God hates to sin, but he loves the sinner. Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Uh, here's your monkey wrench. I can do through all things through Christ which strains me. All right, jump off the Empire State Building. Christ is by all your needs and the riches of his glory. Where's my wife? There isn't a mother out there with a lost son that is on her knees nightly. She is praying. She's earnestly, God, save that child of mine. Save that devil child of mine. God supply all your needs. That child dies and goes to hell. What, do you, what are you going to tell her? Well, you know, I went down to the store and I got to the crowd place and they had this great little sign and I hang it up on the wall. On the wall, Jesus. But not in my heart. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Here's my Bible. Tell me where it is. 
I used to, people come to me when I was on the street free. Judge, at least you be judge. Here's my Bible. Show me where it is, then we'll talk. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. <laughs> That's a great saying because they're not listening. But we're still in the context of John. Whereunto shall I liken this generation? This is not Generation X. This is not, I don't know what generation I was, the nuclear generation, whatever you want to call it. This is the generation of Jews that he's talking to right now. Is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling their fellows. They're in the marketplaces. They didn't have grocery stores. And the children are, you know, running around and, hey, saying, we piped on you. We played music for you. A flute. <clears> of <throat> any kind of pipe instrument. And you have not danced. Hey, we're playing music. You're supposed to dance and, and throw us some money. We have mourned unto you. All right. Remember we talked about that funeral of the girl and there were a bunch of people there and they're making a do. Oh, yeah. Listen, you paid us to cry. You, pray, you paid us or supposed to pay us to come and, and shed tears and play sad music and play sad songs. And you have not lamented. You, you, you know... All right, we try to make a joy, but you're not happy. We try to make a, a, a mourning, and you're not sad. You are not listening and adhering to us. You're an oddball. Too bad the church dances with the world. Too bad the, the church laments with the world. Where the world is against your Savior. For John came neither eating nor drinking. The guy ate locusts for a living. Can you picture a Baptist church? Oh, we got a special plate of locusts over here for you, John. Just for you, the Baptist. When was the last time you went to a Baptist fellowship and they undid the, the tinfoil and there was locusts? After your father, John the Baptist. And he didn't wear a tie and he didn't wear a suit. He wore a girdle. Thou shalt not wear what pertains to a man, what pertains to a woman. Thou shalt, a woman shall not wear what pertains. Okay, women are supposed to wear the girdles, right? They, the men wore the girdles. Where's your girdle, preacher? John was dressed with a leathern girdle. John didn't smoke camels. He wore them. So you would say camels were clean animals. You wouldn't have something dead on them. When John went to the poster shop, to the clothing shop, to the tailor to buy new clothes, it would be, you want a suit with one hump or two humps? Locusts were clean. I think the law even specifically said you could eat locusts. And they said, he has a devil. Why? He's not conforming to the world. He's not making joyfulness with us. He's not crying with us. He, he's not, oh, the Super Bowl. He's not happy. Oh, the, the Hollywood actor died. He's not sad like the church. The church is happy. Oh, the Republicans won this state. The church is upset. Oh, the Democrats won that state. So, you've got a devil. Well, you're not going to have the kingdom come with the Messiah when the ambassador, if I may use that word, when the voice of the man who for the Messiah spoken about in the scriptures 
Oh, he's a devil. Oh, you can forget about the kingdom come. All right. The son of man, this is Jesus. He came eating and drinking. We've seen him at parties. We've seen him at dinners. We see him sit down. He sat with the publicans and sinners. Ew. He's at a marriage in Cana. Though so he's not recorded to drink the wine himself. But he's eating. He's drinking. Jesus' diet is more than locusts. He's asked for fish. Yeah. And on the other hand, besides John the Baptist, they say, he behold a glut in this man. I don't think so. And a wine bibble. So they lied about John saying he has a devil. They're lying about the Messiah. Oh, he's a fat man. He eats anything and everything. And he drinks wine and beer. So you'll meet your average homeless, intoxicating drunk. Now, didn't Jesus change the water into wine? That means he has to be a wine builder right there. Well, didn't Jesus feed the 5,000? Oh, there's your gluttonous. Yes, but did, did the Bible say he ate? Did the Bible say he drank? No. The world says, Mark that passage there is, he has a devil as a lie. Mark, he's a glutton, this is wine, but they're lying about Jesus. A friend of publicans and sinners. True. Just sitting at Matthew's house already. But wisdom. Is justified of her children. The children of God are wiser than the children of the world and the devil. Now, when you when you're looking at the church, when you get an idiot that comes up, I said idiot, you tell him that. There's only one gospel in the Bible. You're proclaiming a lie. There's nothing wrong with Easter or Christmas. You're proclaiming a lie. You are in the groups of the world. Jesus' birthday is on December 25th. Okay. Put that with, well, Jesus was a pig. Jesus was a drunk. Where does it say that? Verse 19. Gluttonous. That means you eat too much. Wine beer means you drink wine. Birthday, December 25th. You're lying. And if you want to be right, and if you want to be true, and you want to be wisdom, you will be justified by what your Bible Study to show thyself, approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed. Rightly divide the word of truth. If you rightly divide the word of truth in the church age, you're not going to make ridiculous, slanderous ideas and thoughts and misapply scripture without no knowledge. I hear it all the time. A pastor of a church, and I know a pastor, whatever you drive by a church, and you make sure you say a prayer for that church, that man does not know church history. Because he doesn't understand, I forget if it's Second John or Third John, where John says, do not even wish them God's speech. That's the Jehovah Witnesses. That's the Mormons. That's the Catholics. That's the Eterians. That's anybody. You don't know church history when, when 
the Catholic Church who calls themselves Christians, and you hand out the daily bread to your Baptist uh, 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 people, they were killing Christians over the Word of God. William Tyndale was killed because he wanted the Bible in English, and a church said, oh, no, you don't. The Geneva Bible, the Bible before the King James Bible, was called the Moderate Bible because they were killed. Blood was shed for the Bible. The blood was never shed for the RSV. The blood was never shed for the NIV. The blood was never shed for the New King James. King James authorized the King James Bible. Now, he didn't write it. He wanted the, the Bible in a, in a language of the people. King James himself had family that the church tortured, maimed, confiscated, and persecuted. His own family line, Mary, Queen of Scots. Had Israel believed who Jesus was, John would not have been a Baptist. He would have been John the Elijah. Go back and read Elijah. He showed. He just pops up one day. That's how John showed. They're both wearing leathern uh, suits, or whatever you want to call it. They're both eating locusts. And they're both got a woman queen upset. Jezebel and Herodias. Now Herodias may not have been a queen, but she's the next best queen thing to the Roman Empire. And both John the Baptist and Elijah right now are in heaven. Now Elijah's coming back to be killed. To be killed by his enemies. John the Baptist was killed by his enemy. It was the wife of Herodias that told her daughter, I didn't tell him to give me his head. You can't understand what we just read if you don't read the Old Testament. You can't understand to read what we just read when your pastor goes into Matthew like, hey, this is a church age book. And if your pastor's been taught carnally, worldly, corinthianity, then you're not going to get nothing out of the scriptures because rightly divine Matthew, it's not our book. Now there's plenty in there that we can look at. I can spiritualize, but I'm trying not to. I'm trying to put it doctrinally on the nation of Israel. We, the Baptist Church, and I've heard I've heard the preacher say, we do not come from John the Baptist. Because you're saying the church came before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. You're in great error. 